In this video, we're gonna give you tips on how to tile a shower, specifically how to use stacked subway tile in a tub shower combo. These are really awesome tips, so let's dive in. Tip number one is to plan your layout. This is very important. Layout is always the first thing you wanna do before started tiling. So basically in this feature, we obviously have a niche that goes the full length of the shower. And we're gonna be using some Schluter edging for that. Basically there's two obstacles that we want to make sure we don't have slivers and one is obviously up towards the bent up towards the niche you want to have you know hopefully at least a, we're using four by eight tile so ideally it would be nice to have either a full tile or something above half that usually looks a little bit nicer if you can basically just staying away from being less than an inch uh, less than an inch looks kind of forced we want to be able to lay this out so that we have a large piece here and obviously making sure that this piece is going to be large because this is all going to be the four by eight subway tile on this wall so you want to make sure that this isn't going to be a sliver either and obviously you have the ceiling joint you have to consider as well tip number two is also very important it's to measure the mortar and the water for the mortar as you can see here we're pouring the water into a separate measuring bucket you can grab these at your local home store definitely get them so for this the wall application we're going to use the 4xlt made by laticrete this is a non-sag thin set it's a little bit stickier it'll allow that subway tile to really stay on the wall and not sag so there's two different amounts of water ratios that they have on here. This would be for a thin bed floor. So like if you were doing a mosaic floor on the, on the on a shower floor or something, you wanna mix it a little bit wetter. But for walls and large heavy tile, you're gonna to wanna to go between four and a half and 4.75 quarts. Uh, so we're gonna do the 4.75 quart ratio on this. I'm actually only gonna mix a half a bag, so I'm just doing half of this for right now. We mix the four XLT per the directions, always follow the directions and mix it for the specified amount of time. Tip number three is to leave a gap between the first row of tile and the bathtub. You always want to have a spacer of some sort between the tub and your first wall tile. A couple reasons for that is, for one, you need a little bit of room for expansion and contraction. The other is when you fill this tub up with warm water, nor you know normally things flex a little bit. So you really want to get a nice caulking joint at the tub. And if you have a space there, that silicone going into that joint will create a nice good grip for the silicone. If you just went flat to the tub, you're basically just smearing silicone against the tile on the wall and there isn't a lot in the corner, so you end up having separation of it. But the main reason for having any type of space here is for expansion and contraction, because this tall, you know, believe it or not, in a cold and hot weather, the tile will actually expand and contract just slightly, not a lot, but enough that you want to have a little bit of room. So I just like to use these horseshoe shims. I think these things are really, they're so much easier than those rubber ones that you get at the home stores. And they're all really very consistent. And it's just really easy to be able to shim them up. Like if I were, say, slightly off level here, which you can see I'm, I'm pretty level. But if I was off level, I can just easily add another one and get, get the height. Horseshoe shims are definitely something, especially with subway tile, really helps out a lot. Tip number four is to use a laser level, one of our favorite tile setting tools. As you can see here, we have a, a laser level that has both a horizontal line and a vertical line. This is just a personal preference, but it definitely helps us out with not only subway tile, but large format tile. And you can adjust the laser and move it over to the edge of the tile so that you know you're getting a really nice level pattern for the first row, which is critical for your tile setting. Tip number five is to use the right size trowel, and this depends on the size of the tile, its thickness, and how heavy it is. For the subway tile, we're actually just using a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel for it. So with the flat side of the trowel, Kind of burn the thin set into the substrate here. And use directional troweling with all the ridges going in the same direction. Tip number six is to take a coffee break. Coffee is very, very important on cold days in Pittsburgh. Tip number seven is the back butter tiles using the flat side of the trowel. And then since these are larger subway tile, we're gonna actually back butter each one just to ensure that we have a nice coverage on it. And just basically go, go with our 
laser. Tip number eight is to leave a gap in the corner between the tile and the adjacent wall, typically about one eighth of an inch. And you also wanna have a gap in the corner for expansion and contraction. As you can see, we use these 1 16th inch horseshoe shims to not only provide gaps between the tile and the tub, but between themselves and in the corner. Tip number nine is to get between 95 to 100% thin set coverage between the tile and the backer board. The reason why we back butter the tiles, even these four by 12 subway tiles, is because that does allow us to get the 95 to 100% coverage that the TCNA, the Tile Council of North America, recommends for wet areas. And because this is a shower, it's considered to be a wet area. So having that much coverage, that thin set coverage, provides you with a strong bond between the tile and in this case, the hydroband board. Before I forget, we have a video that shows you how to waterproof the walls in the shower. We used hydroband board. It's super easy to use, easy to cut and light. So if you wanna see that video, it's right here, so you can check that out for yourself. Tip number 10 is to check for lippage between the tiles. You can always use a tile leveling system, but for four by 12 tiles, we typically don't use one. As we set tiles, we immediately check them to see if there's one tile that's higher or lower than the other. And if there is, we immediately correct that problem. Tip number 11 is to use a Schluter metal profile if the tiles that you're using don't have a bull nose or a pencil trim. We chose to use Schluter's metal profile Ron deck on the bottom of the shower niche and also on the top. You can embed it first or you can slide it behind the tiles. We actually have it capping the plumbing wall and the wall opposite the plumbing wall too in this particular case. You just butt tile directly up against the Ron deck. You don't have to worry about a gap between it and the tile. Tip number 12 is to pitch the niche. As you can see, we're back buttering these sill plate tiles. These are the tiles that go directly on top of the shower niche, the shelf that is. And the reason why we do that, it's easier for us to pitch them downward toward the bathtub or shower, and that way water will drain properly from the shower niche. Tip number 13 is to clean the grout joints as you're setting tile. One of the little tools we love using is a linoleum knife. This is perfect for cleaning the joints, and then you just sponge off the top of the tile. And just look at your grout joints, because this is going to be a real easy place to kind of just look straight down and see whether these are aligned. You can use a paintbrush just to get this thin set behind the tile. It kind of makes it a little bit easier to clean out rather than scraping each joint. And you don't have to get all the thin set out. You just have to get it obviously below the tile grade. Tip number 14 is to create a radius for the tile that's gonna be wrapping around the tub edge. We first create an L cut in the subway tile using the wet saw. You can also do it using an angle grinder, but the wet saw is a bit more accurate. So we're cutting this short so that we can make this little radius that fits around the tub nicely. So we just snapped out that little piece of tile then we used an angle grinder with a diamond blade, in this case, Montelite's CGX115, to cut out this radius. So the, the main thing is be very careful when you're doing it, but this is one of the best methods for creating that radius for around the tub. And then just clean off the thin set that oozes out and then add your spacers. Tip 15 is to cut the hole for your mixing valve. So we're just tracing the outline of the mixing valve hole onto the tile. And then we're using our angle grinder with the CGX 115 diamond blade to cut that out. Again, be very careful. Wear a silica dust respirator when you're doing this. And this is just one method for cutting that hole out for the mixing valve. Tip number 16 is to tune up any of the holes that you cut for the mixing valve or for your shower valves. This is called the Mondrillo milling bed by Montelie. And we use this to clean up the mixing valve hole or any kind of shower valve hole. We didn't necessarily have an issue with this. It was covered by the escutcheon, but we wanted to make it look nicer. So as you can see here, we have a nice circular shape using that bit. And then tip number 17 is to leave a gap between the last row of tile and the ceiling. We leave about 1 8th to 1 16th inch of a gap 
between the tile and the ceiling for expansion and contraction. So this is on all three walls in this tub shower combo. And the reason why is the house is gonna have expansion and contraction, and we're gonna fill that gap with sealant. Give us a thumbs up if you like the tips in today's video. If you want more tips, we've got a great short guide. It's like a two page guide over on Home Repair Tutor. You can click right here to get that. You'll also get early access to our online course that I'll show you how to remodel a basement tub shower combo. Thanks for watching the video today. If you got any questions, ask them down in the comments and we're more than happy to help you out. Take care.